take a closer look at this unit before we connect, you're going to see that there's not a lot to it. The teapot is a very simple unit. There's no buttons, there's no real things that can go wrong with it on the device itself. You're going to see here, this is where you're going to attach to your fishing rod. It is a castable unit, meaning it's designed to be attached to a fishing rod. I'd recommend going medium heavy or heavy because it does weigh four ounces, which is quite a bit of weight for anything less than that. There is no on or off switch. It feels the water using these prongs, which is also where you charge the device, and that's going to turn the device on. It does take a few seconds for it to turn on and register that it's actually in the water. So as you're getting this set up for the first time, uh, what I have here is a bowl of water, and that's what I'm going to drop my teapot unit into. So one of the things you're going to want to do right away when you buy your device, or even before you buy your device, is you're going to want to get the Sonar Phone app. I have that loaded here on my iPad, and so I'm going to tap that so you can kind of get a feeling for what that looks like. Um, it will run a demo mode, so you don't actually have to have a teapod to kind of view how this works. Um, the orientation does switch here, uh, so just bear with me a little bit. It's going to ask that you agree because you're using it for fishing and uh, underwater reference only, just a disclaimer. And then you can start the demo. Now on the demo, you're going to be able to see here kind of what the readout looks like. Those of you with a sonar currently in your boats, this should look very familiar. It's the standard right to left scrolling. On the right side of the screen, you're going to see your active water column. And then everything that is scrolling by is what's happening um, past tense, what happened as the unit was taking the reading of the bottom. So right now this information is just a demo, so it is not actually happening. Uh, but we'll take a look at how it connects. So we're going to stop that for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up our settings. Now this again is on an Apple. It's very similar on an Android. Uh, you kind of go through the same understanding with what you have. And we're going to tap the Wi-Fi. And right now I'm connected to my home network. And so what I have to do is select the T-Pod network. You're going to see that here. It's labeled T-Pod 3FO. I'm going to tap that. Now it's asking for a passcode. The password is the same on every device when you initially set it up. That's very easy to remember. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hit join, and you will be able to connect to the Wi-Fi network that the teapot is actually sending out. We'll wait here to see that that check mark is applied, so we are connected. So now we are connected to the teapot network. So I'm going to go back out into my menu and tap on the sonar phone. It is still in that demo mode, so I'm going to get out of that and click connect now. Now you have two choices here. One is the slave, one is the master. Now this is just in reference to who has control of the device in the settings. Uh, because I'm the only one using this device right now, I'm going to select master. If you have other people in the boat that also want to view what your sonar device is sending, you can have as many people connect as you want, but they should all click on that slave option. So I click on master. Again, it's going to ask for a password, and it tells you right there that the default is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then click Start. It'll tell you that the setup is successful. We click OK. And now we are getting a read from our teapot. Now, it is in four inches of water sitting on my tabletop, so we're not going to get a lot of information here, and a lot of the readout is going to be inaccurate.